Alright, welcome to another exciting adventure. Jimmy Coon plays. I am sorry, the last one was horribly, horribly timed out. I didn't start my little clock until after I had already started recording because I know I only have 10 minutes before each thing ends because I got the free version of Bandcam. Well, anyways, let's, uh, let's not waste time and get right into it. <clears throat> This is your room. If you need anything, you have my freak. Don't be afraid to call me for anything. Thanks for showing me around, soul. It's nice having a friend on the ship again. Good night. Good night, soul. So, this is where I'm going to be spending the next few months. I doubt I'll be visiting this room much when there's there's so much work to be done. It's just a tad cramp, but I think it's a good life. I think I can make a good life here. The crew seems friendly. I doubt my mission is mundane, and I don't have to worry about waking up to giant rats gnawing on my computer. I glance over on my roommate's bed. She seems to be fast asleep. The commander said she was Captain Moonflower. Follow. I'll have to introduce myself to her in the morning. It's hard to maneuver around in the darkness, so I relent on packing and head to bed. Tomorrow, I get my start. I get to start my job as the hero. This is going to be perfect. Da, da, da. What is this? Another bird struck the ventilation again? No, as I look around me, I remember that I've been freed from the hellhole. Somebody is banging on the door with a ludicrous amount of force. That doesn't sound like it would be Sol. He said he was going to meet me here in 20 minutes. He always punctual, but... Coming! I quickly throw on a fresh uniform and go over to the door. As the door slides open, an angry looking kid sitting with bright pink hair tied down and twirls charms and flips on as a green. Okay. I'm gonna read hers in my normal voice, but I am going to think of something. Still, you seem to have a moment. You still, you seem like you could make a decent milk. You are my new minion. Lessons making less and less sense. The moment ticks on. I glance at her shoulder and notice the thin stripe of the lieutenant. Star, daughter of President of Earth, Julian Star, and the hero of Zeon. We're on the Nimros. I know that. And I don't care who your father is. Dechromix is critical at all crew members. Finally, someone responds. Uh, reasonable. I thought you 
said you were going to meet me at the lounge. Uh, I kind of slept in again. Oh my God, there's so many people, so many voices I have to come up with. Captain Moonflower, I presume. Her glassy blue eyes constantly yawning to Mr. Goddard, who isn't quite all there anymore. It's nice to meet you. I'm Natalie Fusil, your new roommate. I hope I didn't wake you when I moved in. You moved in? Sorry, I didn't. That's why I have to beat on doors so hard. She doesn't, you know, she doesn't see so much as she slips into a coma. <laughs> it's good to know I won't disturb you. Are you prepared? It's in two hours and twenty minutes. Your temporal check was the resume in this morning. Are you saying you haven't even read your orders yet? I jammed the toast into my mouth and spread it off the down the hall. I can stop it just like I can. Oh, yes, I get to do his voice. Does he know that I've got this? There's nothing to be worried about. Everyone is assembled, Major Prusil. You may commence. And the time. Hack at 0800. Fleet standard time. Welcome, everyone. I am Major Natalie Prusil, and I will be briefing you on the newest mission for the KKS Nimrod. The Operational Code 